why your business process models are wrong and how to fix it. I wanted to explore how you could use AI in your business, but realized that the way we model our business processes are often wrong. First, we need to fix that. Your business is run by processes. Processes are the way things get done. If processes are broken, your business is broken and your customer's experience could suck. The best way to understand those processes is to model them. Any model is a representation of reality with various degrees of granularity and approximations. By modeling a business process that reflects reality, you can better understand the process and therefore you can make changes to improve it. Perhaps doing things a little more efficiently by getting rid of unnecessary steps, leading to saving money, which leads to a better customer experience and improved profitability. I've spent over 20 years modeling and optimizing business processes. I've led a team to develop an enterprise class software for business process management. I can tell you with a high degree of confidence that most business process models are wrong and therefore never get used for the intended purpose of understanding and improvement. So how did we end up here? Here's a brief history. Process modeling started in the early 20th century. Since we were using Gantt charts, flow charts, and sequence diagrams, business process models started to take the same form as a sequential set of steps performed with some decision points in the middle. That made sense in those times because many of the industrial processes that needed to be optimized, like assembling cars or creating new compounds, were mostly sequential. In the 90s, a lot of companies started using the word process as a buzzword to show that they were improving themselves. And so we had a slew of terms like business process optimization, business process re-engineering, business process management, business process redesign, and probably half a dozen more. Standards were also developed and vendors started to create software for process modeling. I was even part of a standards committee. Problem with these standards is that it assumed the business processes were sequential set of steps with some conditional clauses in between to either branch out or join back in to synchronize. That kind of modeling works well for processes that behave that way, but really sucks for those that don't. Many companies had teams or vendors come in and create model after model for all their business processes, which directly went on the shelves with no real value. That's because if you take a non-sequential business process and try to fit it within a sequential structure, all you get is junk. You can't really do anything with it. Unfortunately, there's a whole industry around modeling and optimizing business processes with a fixed mindset that's not easy to change. There is so much vested interest in it, software that is built and dependent on it, and millions of people who've been trained in that way of process modeling. Changing that is like trying to change the US tax code, almost impossible. But having said that, what can we do to help your organization see the value in modeling business processes? Why should you even model business processes nowadays? Businesses are still run by business processes. That will not likely change. Organizations are still clamoring to transform themselves to be effective. And process transformation is one important aspect of that. AI is one more tool in that arsenal of automation. But to use AI effectively in your business, you need to understand your business. And to understand your business, business process modeling is mandatory. So that brings us to the question of how do you model business processes? Some processes are sequential and can be modeled as a set of sequential steps, but many others have to be modeled differently. Here are a few examples. A hierarchical process. Think of how strategy in your organization is communicated and implemented within your organization. In most legacy companies, this still happens top down. The executive leadership formulate the business strategy, perhaps with the help of consultants. Then it's communicated down through levels of the organization to create projects that align with that strategy. 
The easy way to model this would be to use a tree-like structure that reflects the organizational structure. In another example, when an employee in marketing wants to talk to an employee in engineering maybe, the communication path is through the chain up and back down. This is not the most efficient way to do it, but only if we model the reality of what's happening can we even make a convincing argument to leadership to change that. For work itself, cross-functional teams from different departments may be formed to work on different projects. This could be modeled as sub-networks. Then there's a traffic cop-like process model. When customers file complaints about your product or service, perhaps it all comes through one group, maybe through text, email, or 800 numbers, and then that gets routed to appropriate departments to handle it based on the nature of the complaint. This one group may keep track of the status of the complaint and its resolution so that it can be acted upon and status updated. If the departments are talking to one another independently, then that might look something like this. Imagine trying to model all this sequentially. That would not be a right way to do it. If your company is organizing a major event, there are many things that must be planned and followed through. For example, you may have a slew of speakers, the venue, the transportation, payments, food, and a lot more. These are not done in sequence, and many groups may participate in different parts of the process. Many parts of this process can happen in parallel over different time spans, and it'll be useless to try to model this process in a sequential way. And then we have state diagrams. A customer who has an had an accident might go through a claims process which may be modeled as going from state to state such as claim validation, repairs estimated, approved, paid, and so on. Using the wrong model is like using the wrong tool for the job. Would you use a screwdriver to drive a nail into the wall or a hammer to tighten a screw? But this is exactly what is going on and what we've been doing with business process modeling. So how do you fix this problem? Here's the best way to get started. List out all the work that must happen to get the job done. Also include which role does the work and what's required for them to do it. If some work is complicated, then you can simply hide that detail for now and drill down to it later if you wanted to. For starters, don't get bogged down with the details. As you think about modeling this way, you might even use different ways to model different parts. For organizing an event, the way you bring in speakers might be different from the way you arrange transportation. So you don't have to use the same type of model for different parts. Then start by connecting the work by drawing lines or arrows from one to another. You'll start to get a feel for the underlying structure of the process. Explain your simple model to others who don't exhibit the fixed mindset of traditional process model thinking. Seek their input, iterate. Over time, you'll get better at understanding the structure of the underlying process, a structure that is much more useful for transformation. If your organization is one that insists on all business processes being captured in a single enterprise modeling tool and in the same way, then share this video with your executives to make a case for why modeling all such processes the same way is totally useless and is a colossal waste of time and money. Good luck. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing. For a one-page visual summary of this video, sign up on my website. Thank you deeply for giving me the motivation to do what I do.